if you are watching this the day it goes up or the day after, Merry Christmas. I know a lot of people aren't on YouTube over the holidays, which is completely understandable, but I am and I know a lot of people are. So I asked you guys on my community page what you would rather see on a Christmas Eve, which is when this video is going up. And I guess rolling over into Christmas and plant chores won by a landslide. So I've set aside this whole morning, afternoon to do plant chores. Basically what I would be doing if you guys weren't here. So when I come into my plant room and like I visit with my plants, check for new growth, check for root growth, root health, just stare at my plants, take pictures for Instagram, stuff like that. And then I sometimes will fill up a bin of plants that I want to repot and I am in quite a repotting mood like right now. Um, in fact, I was repotting plants this morning before I turned on the camera and I just really don't follow any sort of process or script. It's just what feels inspiring in the moment. So that's what this video is going to be. There is one thing I do want to uh, tackle today and that is kind of rearranging this shelf back here. So let me pick you up and show you. I know I just did a mini plant room refresh, but I'm not super happy with things right now. Just like the way things look, especially on the shelf. My mother light stand, this is my mother lights. It has turned into a propagation station, which I'm not super mad about, but what I need to clean up is back here. It doesn't look like much of a display. It just looks like a place that grows plants. And I kind of started on this shelf too but I'm not super happy with it either. There may be a couple of plants I may be selling in the near future. And down here, my little prop bin, I might take things out and just pot them up for sale. I also have like a bin of seedlings on the floor. This is a cross between um, this Forgetii as the pollen donor and this Indo Crystal Mag as the seed parent. I don't wanna put them into a dome because I'm just trying to like grow them in ambient conditions, but they're on the floor. I don't know. Like I just don't really have space here. So I do need to get some props out so I can clear some space to put little seedlings down there. I need to do something with some like water rooted plants and um, this orchid <laughs> needs a home. Another thing I need to do is go into my propagation exo. Um, there's a cup right here of water rooted cuttings that need to be potted up. I have potted some of them up since that video I did the refresh and, um, you know, pull some things for sale. There are some other little props down here as well. So what I'm going to do is start two bins. One bin is for plants that need to be repotted and another bin is plants I'm going to bring to North Shore Tropicals to sell. Lauren's doing like three live sales over the holidays, which I don't think I can be at all of them, but I do want to bring some plants. I want to just start with like my favorite part of visiting my plant room, which is opening up my tent and just looking at new leaves and stuff. This is not necessarily to repot because I've been pretty on top of repotting things in here, but this is just my favorite, favorite time. Actually, now that I think about it, I should probably prepare a watering can of nutrient water or something. What should we do today? What are we overdue on? Since I've been repotting so many things into tree fern soil, um, I'm going to do TPS liquid soil today. I do not have the original bottle because we split this bottle, me and Charmaine, so I just have it in a little amber glass, but this is 1.5 mils to a liter so, I mean, I don't really think that you can overdo it very easily, but this is essentially like beneficial bacteria to kind of reintroduce into your soil microbiome. 1.5, this is like two liters. I'm just gonna do a good little glug of it. I really wanted this product just because I love the idea of microorganisms doing all the work for me. And I wanna make sure that there's beneficial bacteria in there to help break things down that are dead. It does put my mind at ease to have um, beneficial bacteria in the substrate just to make sure that like any um, decay is like broken down so that like when I see root rot, I'm not like just too worried about getting the plant out. I can just let it be for a while and just kind of assess. So basically I don't even like really repot the plant if I see raw on it unless I see the plant declining. So any plants that need water are going to get some of this. All right, what's going on in here today? This one I'm so antsy to see it grow. This is my um, HU King of Spades Cross with Red Crystallinum from Cartel Down. It's still small, but it's poking a leaf out right here. 
I recently repotted into tree fern from just tree fern fiber and it was in one of these little cups so it went from this to this I do see root growth but not a ton I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but there's like an existing root that's starting to push out secondary root growth so far so good though I think I hope this is one of those plants I'm like very emotionally invested in because it was actually on my wish list. I don't know if Eric saw that it was on my wish list when he sent these to me. And I know a lot of you messaged or tagged Cartel in my video or like in your plant orders saying that like my video drove you to them and then they sent me a bunch of plants after that, which by the way, thank you, didn't have to do that, but I do really appreciate that. Hopefully it starts to size up soon after I increase the pot size. My little spirit of sancti needs water. Give you a little bit here. My sad, sad spirit of sancti. It is trucking along, but she's baby. <laughs> I don't really see any root growth. I honestly don't think any roots are gonna grow out of like the existing stem. I think it's gonna grow out a little bit off this, this growth point and then start rooting down from the new tissue up top. <sighs> At least it's still alive. Another plant from Cartel. This is my Bigfoot Blue Pap. I repotted this recently on camera. Which repot was it? I don't remember. But I was moving things into tree fern soil. I think it was my Anthurium FOMO video. Okay, this one needs a bit of water. It's rooting quite well in here. Boo, 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 little roots. And I repotted it because the leaves were getting like really sickly looking really super pale these were the leaves that it came with it didn't look like this when i got it but it started to like fade and then i grew one leaf that was underdeveloped but it just popped a leaf and it does look really nicely symmetrical it does look healthy so fingers crossed it's coming back i think the substrate is actually quite dry so i will water it from the top otherwise if it's kind of like damp but I could fill up the reservoir a bit because I have Lekka down here, then I'll just put it straight into here. But I think it needs a little bit up top. Also, I have been finding, so you guys know when like I first did that whole mass repot into tree fern soil and everything was like exploding with growth and the new leaves were like huge and the roots were taking over so fast. That was a batch of soil that I got it was from Garden Works, the local nursery, like really close to me. And it was a bag of soil outside. It was like for container plants, but it was like for outside. So I was like, why don't I just buy this for my inside plants? Because I was looking for like the most cost effective, huge bag of soil at the time, because I was repotting really big plants for a plant client. Like when I installed a bunch of plants for a coffee shop. So that bin of soil had all this mycelium growing. Just tons of mushrooms were popping up. Um, which looked kind of gross, but looking back, I have a feeling that that soil was like extra amazing because later on when I ran out of that soil, I bought a bag of like houseplant potting mix to mix in with my tree for another amendments and it's good, but the roots haven't been like exploding. It's interesting. Like this, this is my um, Vag Lux from North Shore Tropical. Vag is like a Crystal Hopi uh, Crystal Meg, maybe for Getty Eye Hybrid, Cross with Luxurians. This is one of the mushroomy soil plants. I don't know if you're gonna see those little like specks of mycelium. And these were like the crazy fuzzy roots I was getting on those plants versus plants that I potted into. Oh, I guess this is kind of crazy too. Let me see if I can find one that was done with the new soil, like the house plant soil. Maybe it was just in my head though. And maybe I'm just like wishing that that soil was like extra amazing because it would justify um, me buying that cheaper soil that's for outside, but it's kind of gross. This tofu getty eye leaf is so crazy. Do you see how pink it is? And it has a half fused sinus. It's only fused up to here. And that butt crack in the back. It's so hot pink. Look at that petiole. And look at the sinus and the midrib. It's so cute. Tofu is in flower. Tofu is Jing's uh, Indo No ID, this one right here. And she's like, what should I do with it? Charmaine said she should self it. And Jing's like, 
I could self it, but that seems like a lot of work, like a lot of, you know, saving and then waiting for it to flower again. And she says like, she's not super confident about saving and storing pollen. So I was like, my dark forgetty eyes and flower again. We could do this hybrid again. Or I was saying that we could use my Carla Bevep purely using this as a pollen parent because this plant is in no state to be producing children. Um, this is my Carla Bevep. She's in recovery. She's been chopped. Um, as soon as I chopped it, actually, it started to flower. Beautiful Carla-y flower with that baby pink. This Spadex was super green before, now it's turning yellow. It's gonna be going into pollen production soon. It was just receptive. Kind of hard to see, but there you go. And it's starting to push a leaf. Um, since the chop, it started to yellow off a couple of leaves. This one here, this one here, um, this one is starting to go. The newest leaf is this one. It got banged up on the way out so it didn't form properly. And an older leaf is still holding on strong. So those are the two options. We do tofu getty eye again. So tofu as the mother plant again with forgetty eye being the pollen parent or tofu as a mother and this guy as the pollen parent. I think Jing is leaning towards this one just because Tofu Getty Eye was so variable and tofu is very variable. Sometimes will be like probably even more variable than using a pure species as the pollen parent. Either way, we're gonna we're gonna impregnate tofu again. It hasn't flowered for a while, so we'll see. Um, if you guys have a preference, let me know. Um, if you don't have a preference, that's fine. Ooh, another really exciting one. This is my Carla Blackie. The first leaf I grew has fully hardened off now. It is so beautiful. I can't. I can't. It just popped a new leaf. And I'm so glad that it's actually growing because I feel like with Carla's, either you get like a very slow growing, never grows kind of specimen or one that grows pretty, pretty prolifically. And just looking at the size jump from the biggest leaf when I got it to this one was incredibly, incredibly uh what's the word encouraging and is really loving tree fern soil this has been just a very happy camper i just i can't with this leaf like the pink in the sinus the pinky petiole it's so luscious and velvety and the veins just the veins i've been i have been wanting this plant for years I remember it was like one of those plants where it's like not even in Canada for years and or if it was in Canada I'm sure it was in Canada but nobody on socials and stuff was posting it so like it wasn't someone that's actively in the the broader internet plant community and fast forward to now I cannot believe that this is now in my left hand oh you want to see a sad one a real real sad sad guy so my Ace of Spades green form, I had a mother plant that was propped off of Lauren's mother plant and it pupped. It produced a little offset and I recently separated it to grow it on its own and hopefully grow a few more leaves and see if that like really like dagger narrow leaf would um, continue. Well, she she's mad. She's really, really mad about it. Um, I'm glad I got a photo before it starts to go this way because um, I was not expecting it to be this mad. I put it into tree fern soil. Same thing as I've been doing lately, tree fern soil up top, like at the bottom, sitting it in sometimes the reservoir. Although I think this one, maybe I let the reservoir sit for too long without a root system to like really take it up because it has some roots obviously, but not a ton. So I think she, she got pissed off. But also Lauren's mother plant has also been a little pissy too. <laughs> This is not the easiest plant, but I do see one root tip here. I, I feel like it's gonna bounce back. It's a little bit of a shame. And the mother plant, she's mad too. She is mad that I took her baby away. And um, the newest leaf is starting to yellow at the edges. This leaf is hot like a golden sun. Do we have roots? Yes, we do. Nice juicy root here. This also went from um, tree, no, pond, it went from pond in no drainage to tree fern soil in drainage. And I know I sound like a broken record, but it is because I want to fertilize at like a fuller strength than I have been. And I just don't want to risk burn. I'm looking at this growth point that was active before I repotted it. 
Come on. Come on, focus. Right here. And it looks like it's drying off, like dying at the end. Well, you can't win them all, can you? Last video I showed you, was it last video? Yes, it was the last video of the vlog. I showed you the plant that um, Jose got me for Christmas. It's this Ralph Lynham Fort Sherman crossed with Dresslerai. Maybe I should just show you. Inside, this little baby guy, which I am so emotionally invested in this plant. I am, oh, I'm so excited. So the plant that I wanted to give him is an offset of this plant. This is my Dark Phoenix crossed with Papillolanum Fort Sherman. This is from Cartel Down. I didn't prioritize bringing something to the party for him because Jose is actually in Australia as we speak. So I didn't want to give him a plant and he's going to be like, well, it's just going to die while I'm gone. So I wanted to like take my time and find the right thing for him and he doesn't have this. So it's just pushing a leaf right now, but it has also activated. Why is it growing into the petiole? Turn around. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this to you properly. I might have to zoom in, but you see here is a, a secondary growth point. It's quite high up. So, oh, there's actually two. There's another one right here. I'm going to get my finger behind it so you can see. Right here, there's two. That's great. That's really great and amazing. So I figure one of these will have grown out by the time he comes back and I'll be able to separate it for him. That'll be his Christmas present. I feel like I don't know if it's good enough um, of a, I don't know. I always want to outdo the other when it comes to gifts. This one definitely doesn't outdo what he, he gave me, but at least it's a beautiful plant. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with this plant because it's so beautiful. It's like so dark phoenixy. When I first got it, it looked like this. And I really did think it was a dark phoenix, but as it's maturing, I really can see that it's not a dark phoenix. Well, I mean, I know it's not a dark phoenix, but you can really see the difference. And it's so texturally delicious. Oh my goodness. This is definitely my favorite plant out of all the plants that I got from Cartel. Look at that beautiful texture. And it has been growing super well in pond. This is in pond mix with perlite and there's a little bit of orchiata. I've been running low on orchiata. I just haven't had the um, will to purchase more orchiatics. It's kind of expensive. So I just kind of been recycling old orchiata from old pond batches. But yeah, like Dark Phoenix, it also loves pawn. And I'll probably repot it. Actually, I already did repot it once since getting it in, I think it was September. So it was originally in a little plastic cup and I, um, maybe three or four weeks ago, I upsized it into like a bigger glass vessel. I remember now, I totally forgot I did that repot. It was off camera. And then it pushed two leaves in that time. It was this one and this one, and it produced two little two little secondary growth points. So a secondary and a ter tertiary growth point. How is my little Carla B. Vep doing? This is the mid cut. This is the mid cut from the plant I showed you earlier. I put it in a little dome. I already sold um, a sprouted stump on one of the live sales. This is the second one. Looks like the leaf is popping out. I want to grow this one out at least to a leaf before I sell it. So it won't be going to NST anytime soon. Another little stump. This is RA5 Swamp Bunny. This is the bottom. Yeah, it's the bottom cutting of my plant that I showed you. I'll just show you right now. She's a little mad too, but this one, this is the bottom. And um, I showed you guys the mid cut, which I gave to Jesse for Christmas. <laughs> I figured if anyone can make it happy, it's Jesse. The bottom is expanding its leaf and it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty symmetrical, but we will see. Sometimes on that plant, um, when it expands, it will then start to show signs of root rot and stuff, um, which by the way, I will, I've decided to treat this one with systemic fungicide. I have Phyton 35, which I think I can water with, water this plant with it. It is pushing a leaf. So that was a suggestion to me in the comments of my video where I showed this plant and how it was a little bit sad. It was in my then versus now bunny anthuriums edition. It was suggested that I use systemic fungicide just in case there's like internal fungal infection that is um, causing like the continuous root rot fine, then root rot, 
um, stuff. So I will do that. Probably not in this video, but it is on my list of things to do. I will do that. So thank you, Horace, for suggesting that. I never even would have thought of it. Makuna is popping a new leaf. This is my Magnificum cross with Kunai lens, and it's looking real purple. The last leaf on this plant was very orangey. So I am very curious to see if it's gonna start presenting purple because I know that this plant does have purple emergence because it was cut from Amanda's mother plant. My RA5 self, just to give you a quick update, um, I showed this very recently, so not much has changed. The leaf has expanded a little bit, but the flower, the flower is coming out. This one, I can feel that it's dead. It's like really floppy. I don't know if you can see. It's like a dingly dangly guy, but this one is just marching on out. So what do you think I should cross it with? I'm not gonna use this as a mother plant. I'm not gonna put pollen on this at, at least until the next flower, but I could pop it on something else. Here are some options. Plants that are ready to be moms. I have a crap ton of Forgetii, which I don't think... Hmm. Forgetii RA5. Would that be cute? I think everything with Forgetii is cute, but I don't know if the world needs that. Dark Crystallinum, Polytiflorum probably won't be compatible. There's also Bastard, which is like a, no, no, Mag Forgetii hybrid from Amanda, which has like a very, it's like a woman's flower as the sinus. But Lauren also has Bastard, another cutting of Bastard, and she's tried breeding Bastard a few times. Bastard doesn't want to take pollen. It's failed twice on her. So maybe not Bastard. I also have my Dark Phoenix that is <laughs> taking its sweet time pushing out that flower. Let me show you. I haven't shown you my Dark Phoenix in so long, but it doesn't feel right closing off 2023 without showing you my Dark Phoenix again. So since you last saw it in a YouTube video, it has pushed out a beautiful leaf. She is my greatest of all time, this beautiful, beautiful plant. It's finally gaining the size back again since I repot it because it was way too root bound for the longest time and it pushed out this leaf last. So this was like a much smaller leaf than like everything else on this plant and it was dropping a bunch of leaves and I'm waiting patiently for them to just like die off like this stuff because I really want to get rid of it. It just looks so messy with all those leaves on. Um, but I'm slowly letting it reabsorb. So kind of similar situation to my RA5. This leaf, the second newest leaf, I really doubt you're gonna be able to see it, but the inflow was starting to poke out. It emerged from the petiolar sheath and it kind of just stopped. Very much the same as my RA5. But then it looks like the newest leaf, I, I know you really can't see it, but the newest leaf is starting to push out another inflow. So Dark Phoenix RA5 could be an option. <laughs> like I cannot believe that it already is filling out this pot because it's too much. It is too much and I wouldn't get stressed about it if it hadn't started to decline after being so rebound in the smaller vessel and I don't have anything bigger than this. This is about as big as it gets. I don't know what I'll do after this. I think I'm gonna have to use like an ugly food service, you know, like the Cambro brand ones, but it has like the measurements on the side. Maybe I could remove the the volume measurements using acetone or something yeah this one is getting really really massive but it's so beautiful i don't know if any other plant is going to ever dethrone this plant as my favorite in my whole collection i hope not <laughs> Ooh, another one i want to show you this one is my antalachii or bvep from amanda but it was originally bred by grant i don't know if it was in in collaboration with anyone else but to me this looks like one of his batches that was a cross between round and justin jones's felix this one actually looks a bit like Felix to me, but I've never asked. It's in tree fern fiber without soil, like at the bottom. It hasn't rooted out a ton, but there are some roots. There's one poking out the bottom. But this new leaf is such a nice jump compared to the one before it. It's so puffy and cute, and it's still quite soft, so it does have a little ways more to go. It is starting to darken, so I know it's not gonna be like much, much bigger than this. It got a little bit dinged here, but I'll give you just a touch reservoir just because there's a root poking out the bottom. I don't want it to dry out. I wanted to bring this one out because it rarely gets attention. It's always in the back, but it also needs a bit of a cleanup. There's a spider web on it. Why are you so floppy? Why is this inflow like dangling like that? This is the first 
for Getty Eye ever. But well, this is the first Anthurium breeding I've ever done. So the mother was my almost fully dark Brigetti eye, has like pinstripe silver, and the dad was, um, and the pollen donor, oh, I'm gonna need scissors. The pollen donor is my friend JR's true dark form without the silver. And this is the cutest one and the biggest one. So I kept this one, it's been very round, quite dark. Like you can see that the, the silver is very minimal but it is kind of there. It's definitely more there than my dark form. And this one kind of just lives in the back in the pond and I always underwater it, but it seems to be doing okay. I think the next time I repot it will be into tree fern soil, but why are you floppy? Like I've literally never seen an inflow like do this. It feels kind of like when something grows under the substrate, like a, like a alocasia corm sprouts under the substrate and has to go all the way up and it's like really tender. That's what it feels like. It's so strange. There's, I believe that's an actual spider web. That's definitely not spider mites. I do not believe that is spider mites. But let's give you a little bit of a cleanup. I'm just gonna cut off some old, old inflows, peel off some dead sheets, looking to push out and leaf. These plants, I wish that my forgetty eyes would would grow more foliage but they just want to flower all the time i'll give you some liquid soil here yeah i think the next time i repot this will be into tree fern soil just because like the way i've been growing this plant has been so like back in the corner of my tent so i just don't want to water it as often as it needs to and in pond it does dry out a little bit more whereas like my dark phoenix it's in pond it's, i pretty much will always grow my dark phoenix in pond it just loves it way too much for me to like consider any other substrate but it's right front and center it's the first thing i look at every time i open my tent so i have no problem keeping up with the watering on that plant but something like this that i'm not like i'm not seeing as often because like the pot itself gets covered by other plants so i don't even see like moisture levels i think i will put it into soil like a tree fern soil mix Okay, I think that's about done for the tent and the stuff I wanted to show you. There's nothing, there's nothing to repot in here, not that I thought there would be. Let's go to the EXO and find some props to pot up. Okay, I know it's kind of dark, but we're in a real tight corner here, so I don't know what you're going to be able to see. Um, water rooting things. Are you ready to be potted up? We've got Escalado in here, Florida Beauty, oh, Burly Marks. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. I was, I needed, I needed more moss pulls from Lauren and I forgot to grab them last time. I also have, did I say Burly Marks is Flame? I meant Burly Marks Fantasy. Philodendron Burly Marks Fantasy. There's a cutting falling out. This Florida Beauty roots are not there yet, but the growth point has begun. I also have like a Philodendron SP Columbia. I don't know if I want to keep this. I might pot it up and then keep it for... A couple weeks and I might sell it on. All right, well, we'll take this downstairs and we'll repot in my kitchen, I think, just because there's a lot more space in there to repot and I, I just enjoy <laughs> repotting down there more than in my plant room. I potted up some ficus velosa last time. I just want to do a little bit of a tug test. They're not really rooting out just yet. Lauren was so obsessed with it. I know you can't really see it that well, but it's these like fuzzy hairy little ficus they're like shinglers any of these ready then I'll bring it to the sale ooh this one I think has rooted there's definitely resistance in there so maybe I'll bring that one how are you doing nope not ready this one's not ready yet so I'll just bring one to the sale some Hoyas I chopped up this is a Hoya Pachiclada this one is such an easy easy one tug test hmm not quite ready yet. This one might be ready. I know this is not like a highly coveted Hoya, but it is so texturally satisfying. It's powdery. It feels like it, there's a film of powder, like um, a dusted surface, and it's so freaking thick. This is a Florida Beauty. I think I could probably bring this one. It's been rooting in pond, and it's popped an auxiliary bud, and let me see. I saw a root yesterday right here. So that one's ready to go. I'm glad to start clearing some space in here. This one I need to hold on a little bit longer because the original leaf is so low variegation. 
It has popped a growth point. Looks like it'll be variegated and has been rooting in the pond, but I think I'm gonna hold on to it to make sure it's not reverted. Some props that aren't quite ready. This is a Jose Bono. Like it's the bottom of my Jose Bono. It's popped two leaves in a, just a matter of a couple of weeks, pushing the next one. But I don't know if anyone truly, no, I can almost confidently say that very few people are looking for Jose Bono lately. This is the glorious stump that was from Charmaine. I potted this up, it's pushing a leaf now. Okay, that's the extent of what's ready. Okay, I know this is a very weird angle, but this is where my other prop bin is. I think some things are ready to be potted up. Let's see what's in here. Okay, so, ooh, you grew a lot. These are cuttings from my Dark Forgetty Eye, the one I showed you earlier. Not that exact plant, I don't believe. Another one from that seed batch. This one has grown a leaf. I could bring that one maybe. This one has two growth points and two leaves. This is in tree fern soil. Um, yeah, maybe I could bring these. So it doesn't look like a forget eye right now, um, but juvenile forget eyes, if you didn't know, um, can have a sinus. This one has it as well, but it will completely fuse later on. This little tofu eye, my runt, is actually sizing up. Since you last saw it, the newest leaf has gotten bigger, but it's still that weird, like, teardrop shape. It's so interesting. Yeah, it's gonna live in this dome a little longer. I have a little corm that's taken for... Oh, there's two corms in here. This should be scalprum. I'm pretty sure. I didn't tag it, but I'm almost 100% sure it's scalprum and they're finally sprouting. I just actually just repotted my scalprum earlier before I started filming and I took out a few corns and potted them up because my scalprum, if you saw my uh, Who Grows It Better with Charmaine, that was a few weeks ago. My scalprum was so sad and I took it out today. I was like, should I repot it into pond or should I wait till the spring? And I saw spider mites on it. So I stripped it of its soil, gave it a big like, alcohol, castile soap spray, wash it down, and now it's in pond. It's a little pink princess baby. This was from my like pink princess, you probably can't even see the leaf, it's right here. It's uh, one of those Indo like marbly types and I chopped it back down recently and I noted it. I, I chopped it into single nose. You want to see the moss container? It's a grassland. It's grown so much grass. So actually I wanna tackle this now. It actually has gotten kind of big in this in this uh, little moss container. And there are definitely going to be nodes that rotted. So we'll bring this down with us to, to sort through. I think I'm gonna probably be doing a lot of time lasses later when I like repot stuff, just cause like that's my cozy time to like, listen to podcasts and kind of zone out and just be with my thoughts. So I really want it to be kind of as normal as possible as like what I would normally do. This is a box of Manjula. I don't know why, I don't know why I propped that, but that one can stay like that for a little while longer. What are you? Oh, right. This is the weird guy that I don't know the idea that I showed a few weeks ago, this is from Lauren. I potted it into, or did she pot it? No, she potted it in her, her shop mix. Did I pot it? I don't remember. Nothing is happening yet. This is Bessie Aff. I chopped the top off of my Bessie Aff because she's um, annoying and never grows a nice leaf. I'm gonna give you a bit more water. I moved it from pond to tree fern soil. I'm growing the stump out, see if it's nice. I'm also growing out the top. I'll show you right now, I forgot to show you. This is what I was doing before. It actually ripped, so that's that's not its fault, but this kind of stuff is what it was growing. I moved it to tree fern soil into no drainage, just because I'm hearing from people who grow Bessie AF really nicely that it's, not, it's better in soil and it's better to never, ever, ever dry out, like ever, ever, ever dry out. So this will be, the first leaf post tree burn soil, and we'll see if it's any nicer, but I do plan on getting rid of it because she hasn't been very nice to me. And overall, I want a, a different different looking Bessie AF. I want something a little bit more like darker blue toned with more silvery venation. That one has quite green venation. And I want to either like 
sometimes you'll see one that looks like the shape of a dark phoenix like tall lobes it has that like rounded cheeks or the holy grail would be a very flat sinus one but i'm not holding out hope that i'll ever find one like that yes okay so the only thing we're repotting from here is <laughs> the pink princess grassland these oh <laughs> these are little containers of moss that i saved to try to reanimate and i don't know what the end goal was I think I wanted to make a little like pot of it, like Benji style, and then grow it inside of a cloche. But it has reanimated. It's weird. Okay, so you can kind of see it here that it's kind of pinkish. So I was really excited about this moss when it came, it came from Brazil. So it came from the the supplier that sent the Spirit of Sancti and the Burly Marks Flame. Oh, you can definitely see it on under here. It's super pink. So I was like, if I reanimate it, will it grow pink moss? Because it was so, so, so pink when it's dead versus the kind of New Zealand ones that we often get that's quite orangey and more earth toned. But then it looks like the live moss is just lime green. So if I take that out of there, then I have more space for seedlings. Let me swing you around so maybe you can see. So like this, this bin or dome, I can move these out of the way. So now I can not just put my seedling tray in here. That really was not so hard. I don't know why I didn't do it earlier. So back to this orchid. I imported this last year, almost two years ago. This was from Equigenera. And I really loved it for the flower. It's one of those lady slipper orchids that has a whisker that comes all the way down until it touches the ground. And the idea is that it attracts ants. So ants can actually crawl up it and like pollinate, maybe act as pest control. Obviously I'm not very good at orchids and it's never flowered for me. I acclimate it in the mix of like what looks like with a chunky asteroid size perlite, sphagnum moss, orchiata, and I think that is it. And it dries out a lot. I'm told that this orchid likes to be sitting in water. It's usually found on like slopes with running water. So it would be a good candidate for hydro, full hydro or semi-hydro. I want to repot it. I kind of doubt it has any good roots, but I want to repot it into definitely a orchid pot. Um, maybe like tree fern, tree fern soil. And I'm thinking of, well, I, I need to pest treat this just in case and I wanna maybe grow it in my Hoya cabinet because I know it'll be happier in there and like it's obviously not pretty until it grows a flower. So I think I will do that. So I'm gonna put this in this bin too. Oh, this is kind of sad. This would have been ready for sale. This is, I think, gonna go to Jing. This is the bottom cutting of one of my my almost dark forgetty eyes and Jing doesn't have a dark forgetty eye anymore. So I was like, you can have one of these ones. And um, it pushed out two leaves and I thought I saw a spider mite on one of them so I just blasted it with spider mite knockout and then just walked away and it turned into nori as in dry seaweed so Jing will have to wait for the next two leaves to come out some tortum cuttings that I took a while ago and they are not rooting so I think what I'll do is I might just bring this down with me and pot them up in pond and stick them in that exo because I don't want them on the floor here anymore and then in this corner is where my Queen of Hearts lives, my Anthurium Queen of Hearts, but it's in the kitchen right now because I just repotted it. So it's gonna go back here. So we're making some progress here. I'd like to rearrange things, maybe get rid of one plant or two. And then um, when we come back from the kitchen and are repotting, we're gonna sort out this shelf behind me. And I think that it will be a nice long day and it's already been an hour since I started filming and I'm quite hungry so I'm thinking I'm gonna eat um, and I'll meet you in the kitchen. See you in a bit. Well I could probably do a better backdrop than this but <laughs> it'll have to do. We're in the kitchen now, the dogs are here, you might hear them running around a little bit. I just fed Doug lunch so he's a little bit full of beans and Huxley's like what's going on, what's going on? But I wanted to show you um, some things that I already repot this morning before I started filming. So my scalp room, like I said, I moved it out of soil into pond. I also ripped off a bunch of like lower leaves that were starting to go. I fully expect it to freak out a little bit. I know scalp room is like pretty 
tough and pretty hardy, but I do expect it to like drop another leaf or two, get pretty wilty, probably rot all of its roots, but it's now in pond. It's a little bit of a tall pot for this, but I was looking at Charmaine's scalp rum when she brought it here to show in that video, and when the leaves get quite big, it balances out. So it's a little bit of a long game. Um, but it also looks already quite a bit better out of that pot and I just know that pond will be better for it. I don't know why I was growing it in soil to be honest. I have never grown any alocasias long term in soil. I don't really know what I was thinking. So that's him all cleaned up. I have spider mite sprayed it as in like I used 70% alcohol and um, Castile soap mix. No water at all. I just sprayed it down. It really stings the nostrils and then I wiped it off. So it should be good now. And then I harvested three corns. Yeah, so one is already a little baby leaf. One is sprouting. This one already has roots. And then this one is just one little macadamia nut. No roots. And it'll go into that dome that the pink princess thing came out of. My Anthurium Queen of Hearts, I moved it out of this pot here into the biggest uh, clear pot I have. So it can start sizing up now, please. I was holding off on this repot because it was in flower, not that I was gonna do anything with it, but I do want to collect the pollen off of this. It has a second info coming in right here and Another leaf, don't know if you can see that growth point. It's in tree fern soil still with a lecker layer at the bottom and then I put it into this like glass bowl to drain into because I inoculated it with great white. But I feel like this might just be its saucer from now on. I think it looks all right. And I don't really use this um, glass mixing bowl so much anymore just because it's kind of heavy and I just been repotting with like stainless ones. So yeah, that's, that's, the queen of hearts done all i have to do with it now is just give the leaves a little bit of a wipe down because they're kind of dusty so like i said um i will do some talking here and there but i think this section is going to be a lot of time lapses just a lot of music so i can kind of relax as well because after all this is supposed to be a bit more realistic so i think what i'll do is i already talked you through what i'm going to do with the pink princesses the orchid this guy um the Tortums, this Florida Beauty, not ready yet. Doug, can you, can you chill? Can I take the bowl away from you? And I know you guys have not seen Huxley in such a long time. Here he is, he's doing so good. He's such a good brother. You're teaching your brother all the good things, right? Right? <laughs> Doug has been so much easier than Huxley because of Huxley. Like Huxley's been such a huge, huge help in like tiring him out and playing with him and showing him the ropes. So you're my sweet, sweet angel. And here's Doug. <laughs> Dougie the baby. He's um, I know you guys want updates on them. The only update I can tell you is that Doug is growing. He's eating a lot. He's eating my entire bank account. We have to get a dog food delivery like every week to week and a half. It's just, yeah, it's not, it's not fun. This Escaloto can be prodded up. I cannot wait until he doesn't have to eat puppy portions anymore. This hetero, ooh. So this is the hetero crossbedon leaf that had spider mite damage, so I didn't sell it. But water roots have begun and the growth point is active. And I always thought of this as like one of the hardest philodendrons to propagate. But the last two, like the only two cuttings I got, got off of my plant have been great. This Escaletto was also done. I might hold one back just in case I regret getting rid of my Escaletto completely. I don't know that I will, but I might. This is the Tight Veins SP Columbia. It's crawling now. It's got roots. That one's going to be potted up. Um, this Florida Beauty, also not ready. This, I need to pot up onto a moss pole, but I keep forgetting to get one from NST when I go there. So I need to get more moss poles. The only ones I have left of the D-shaped moss poles are like the quite big ones, like the medium and the large. And I want a small one for that. So this will go back in water for the time being, but it is ready to be potted up. Gloriosum, not ready. This is my angry Alice Gloriosum with the very angry looking leaf. I feel like I was in a train of thought regarding the dogs. But maybe I finished it. I don't remember. It's gone. 
it's gone from my head. Um, I think we're gonna do pond for everything. I like pond for philodendrons and pond with no drainage, not too much. So I would like to try to, similar to something like this, not this cup, I mean like have it quite shallow so it's not filling the whole cup, not needed. Just cause like none of these have that much roots anyways and I don't want it to be too heavy in case Lauren needs to ship it. Boys, and these pink princesses are rooted in uh, moss. So I think I'm gonna do soil. <laughs> just I can't wait to get rid of that grass. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna set you up and I'm just gonna get to work and I'll talk when necessary. Okay, sorry to interrupt the soothing music, but with this orchid, I've decided I'm gonna grow it in this pot because I didn't talk through this earlier. I'm gonna put a Leco reservoir there at the bottom, tree fern soil, like basically the same thing I do with all my anthuriums lately because I wanna be able to sit it in water because this one I actually wanna grow semi-hydro style. And I ripped off a couple of leaves that were kind of browning at the base and they were getting really floppy. I can see a couple of growth points activated here. I really don't know orchids so I'm just gonna do what I think is right and I'm gonna pop this into like a little deli cup to sit it in water and it's gonna grow in my Hoya cabinet. All right back to the music.
Well, we really blasted through those repots. This is what happens when I repot and I don't talk the whole time. It is so fast and this is why I like to repot off camera. Not because I don't like to repot with you guys, but if I'm like blabbing and blabbing and blabbing, I don't get nearly as much done as I'd like to and the repots really do pile up. So when I can just like focus like this and just, usually I'll have Dateline playing in my ears while I do that or actually my favorite most relaxing way to repot is when my boyfriend is playing Xbox in the living room and I'm repotting here and I can just hear the ambient music, the video game music, and the dogs are probably most likely cuddling with him on the couch. That's my idea of the most relaxing evening. And I plan to do that at least once over Christmas with a glass of wine. People keep gifting me wine and I'm the only one who drinks wine in this household and I would love to just smash those bottles of wine. I'm gonna pack these up now and I'll see you back in the plant room. I've popped a lot of the props I just potted up back into their spots. So some went into this dome, like the little baby ones, some went into that exo. They're gonna root out a little bit more, hopefully push out some new growth before I pass them on. And then I also have a bunch of plants that I just potted, potted, plopped into this bin. This is for sale bin. There's only five plants right now, so I don't know if I'm gonna have that much to bring this time to the sale. We are now going to tackle this shelf and this shelf. The only trouble is with my camera, whenever my face turns away from the camera, the exposure goes crazy whenever I can't find my face. Let me, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. So it's gonna be a little bit disjointed. I'm gonna try not to talk with my face turned away from the camera. You know what, let's start with this one behind me. It annoys me the most. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. What I don't really like is that it doesn't really look proportioned, like it goes, huge on one side and then there's like very sparse leaves on that side especially because one is a tortum and it's like 90 percent air i think i want to take everything out prune trim what i need to and then put it back i think that'll be the easiest way All right, everything is out with the exception of the big Indo mag and the dark forgetty eye. Basically this outlet tower takes up a lot of space, but it kind of has to be there because it <laughs> lights all the way up to the top of the EXO. So if I move it anywhere too far, it's not gonna be able to reach. So it unfortunately kind of has to stay here. What I was thinking is putting the Indo mag in that corner but it's a lot of leaves and some of these leaves have spider mite damage on them. Like this one definitely has spider mite damage on it. I think it would be best suited to be that in that corner if I chop some leaves off. So if you don't like leaf chopping, just cover your eyes for a second. I'll tell you when you can look again. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Okay, you can look again now. Now it's just a big, big old single leafer. It does really need a repot, but I don't have a pot bigger than this. That's clear. So one day I'm gonna have to like relent and give it a non-clear pot. But for now, it's gonna live in here and I'll water it more often. One reason why I, I wasn't fussed about keeping the other leaves is because like I have no plans to breed this again. Um, I don't want it to get much bigger than it actually is because this is freaking huge. And if Anything, I would rather another anthurium get really big. I do really, really enjoy this leaf. It's so, so massive and so just awesome to look at, but I need it to not get much bigger than this. Like that-ish. Might rotate it a bit later. But also, I have to fit in my Queen of Hearts somewhere, probably right next to it here. Now this forgetty I didn't want to move because it's producing berries right now. It's just such a wide, wide leaf plant. And I would love to cut one or two leaves off of it, but it is producing berries, so I don't want to disrupt it. One plant I know want to, I want to have front and center is my king of spades. And then maybe behind it, I'll put mm, this forgetty eye maybe. I've got it raised up like this. 
Well, this will be like my forgetty eye corner. So much empty space right here. Maybe that one won't go there. It's okay. This one, I was waiting for the leaf to kind of fall off on its own, but I think I'm just gonna rip it off just so I can squish it into a better spot. So this is my Mag Lux from Lauren, Lauren North or Tropicals. And this one has been rehabbing in tree fern soil. I used to have it in pond and it was really root bound and it was really unhappy. I'm just gonna pull this leaf off or chop it off. And it also needs a bit of water. I don't really have a good spot for my tortum. This one is currently like just not looking good anywhere. Um, I chopped the top off about a couple of months ago and I think it's only just starting to grow again, but maybe not even. And I wanna get it onto a pole. So instead of a clear stake, I wanna get it onto a proper moss pole, but again, I need to buy more poles in order to make that happen. Maybe I'll just pop you. How does that look? You can't even see it. You know what, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. And then my VGI maybe can go here. And then my Florida Beauty can go here, which also needs a moss pole. And then that just leaves my SP Silver from Peru, which maybe doesn't even need to go here. Okay, you know what? Let me get out of the frame. This looks a little bit better, I think. What do you guys think? It definitely looks better than before. And I honestly think that this is gonna be something I'm gonna have to like do every six weeks or so as leaves grow in and stuff like that. I think this needs to happen <laughs> just to rearrange and make sure it all looks good still. But I think this is much, much better. I think I can see the plants that are thirstier a little bit easier, get to them a little bit easier. All the plants from here over kind of get mother light because I have one bar, 32 watt bar facing this shelf and then I have another facing around this general area so these here will get extra light. I wish the forgetty eye could be like a little bit higher so you can see it better because I really love this plant a lot but then um, any closer to the light I think it's going to start bleaching. I'm definitely happier with this than before so we're going to move on to this shelf. This one I'm going to probably put on this shelf. This is like I said my SV Silver Peru. It was in Lekka when I got it from Jesse. I moved it to tree fern soil. Yes, tree fern soil with like at the bottom, no drainage. And it's popped of the fuzziest root. So I think it's coming back. It's not like debile level hard, but um, maybe like Bessier Aff finicky. There are some berries ready to be harvest. harvested. This is my forgetty eye that spontaneously started growing berries. I'm probably later today off camera just gonna harvest these guys and get them planted in tree fern. I have been waiting to repot this for so long, but held off because it was producing berries. So I'm gonna pull those berries off and get it into a bigger container. Here's a plant I'm thinking I'm gonna sell, rehome, whatever. This is an Anthurium pendens. I got it a long time ago. It's grown a lot for me, but I think I don't love it enough to give it the care that it needs. So I'm always behind on the watering. Right now, this is quite dry and then Bonus, I have a saucer back. I started rearranging this shelf a few days ago and I just got brain block. I think partly is because some plants on here don't look very good. So they're not gonna look good anywhere. So I'm just gonna have to like live with that for a while. So for one example is this angry girl. This is my Crystal Item Silver Special from Tropicals. This is the newest leaf. It's still expanding slightly. Well, I mean, one reason why it's angry is because it's dry. But I swear I just watered this like four days ago. So it went from pond in a small kind of cup, plastic cup with no drainage. That's what I acclimated this plant in when I, when I got it. And it was fine for a while, but it started to just drop all these leaves. So I just recently chopped off a lot of ugly leaves just so I don't have to look at them anymore. And it pushed this thing out since being repot into tree fern soil. What I'm gathering from people who own this plant is that it's not the easiest. Certainly Lauren kind of has to like be very on top of it for it to be really beautiful. And I'm also seeing some people say the same thing on Instagram. So if you own this plant, let me know if you really like dialed it in. And my guess is that like 
I want to treat it like a queen and never let it dry out. So I've already failed on that. I'm going to keep it, I think, somewhere closer to the front and try to keep on top of the watering. So maybe it can just go like here, maybe. And another one I don't know what to do with is this freaking UPI. Look at this. It's like a fidget spinner. It is coming back. Um, I don't know if anyone will remember that it had really bad root rot in pond. It also got spider mites. You can see some damage here. But when I got predatory mites in, this thing was covered in the predatory mites. So I feel like they're gone. I haven't seen any webbing or mites on them since. I just don't know what to do with this wingspan. But right now it just lives kind of here. So maybe it's like a little bit too ambitious to expect that I'm gonna really love whatever I do here. Look at this one lingerie leaf. It's so majestic. I want to chop off a few leaves off the Wenli as well, and it's purely cosmetic. Some of the leaves, specifically these two right here, bother me when I look at them because this one didn't form properly because I wasn't on top of the watering when I um, was growing this leaf when this leaf was expanding, so it hardened off like that. This one hardened off okay, but um, without these two, ooh, without these two, this plant would look a lot more balanced. I'm actually gonna do that right now. I held off on doing that because before it was working on berries and then the berries failed. So now it's fine and I can probably repot this fairly soon once the newest leaf hardens off. Provided it doesn't put out another inflow because I do want to try pollinating it again. I think that looks better. My little, um, Scott Morianum 69686 hybrid from Amanda has started to size up ever since I got it out of the dark because it used to live in that propagation exo but it was shaded by every plant and the new leaf that grew out on that shelf under lights is so much bigger. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I want to pot it up bigger for sure but right now, right now I'm just going to leave it but I just wanted to raise it up on a deli cup. It's at the back of the shelf, so I wanted to be able to see it from behind another plant. Okay, I figured it's probably easier for me to just pop you around and show you. It's really hard to look at this and be like, oh, I know exactly what to do to make it look better. Because the plants, a lot of them are looking slightly sad. They just need a season of pestlessness to start looking better, but Right now it's looking a little bit sparse. Some plants definitely look better than others. Like for example, this queen is looking so good. She's sizing up. I moved her up to the front of the shelf now so it's not directly under the lights because obviously it's going to get burned because it's getting quite close to the lights. Well, it would be touching the lights if it was back there. And this leaf is still super floppy and it's sizing up finally. And it's doing so much better actually in ambient conditions compared to inside the EXO, it doesn't have any powdery mildew, no fungal infections anymore. Um, the Wenli obviously looks good. I think it would actually probably look better up here, but I want to make sure it gets tons of light. This little Rio that I added from the last repot, um, this Polypodioides is doing good, but sprinkled throughout are tons of plants that don't look so good. My Luxurians was moved out of the tent and it showed me exactly how angry it was about it. And of course the scalperum that I just, just repotted. Hopefully it bounces back this winter. But yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it there. And just to show you from this level what the shelf looks like now. Definitely a little bit empty up top, but I don't think a lot of these plants can take a ton of light with the exception of the King of Spades. I think they're probably pretty happy with the light that they're receiving. Um, but I think this does look less messy than before. Once I get the mother lights back in this spot, it's gonna definitely look a little bit brighter. Those leaves aren't gonna be so backlit. Yeah, I think this is better. It's not perfect, but it is better. And I really love how tidy this looks down here with the bins in place. Oh, the Queen of Hearts, hold on. Keep forgetting about the Queen of Hearts. Maybe it could go here. It definitely will get enough light in this spot. Just want to make sure that I like it and I can still access those props when I need to. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's really easy to just pull this uh, stand aside when I need to. All right, I think I'm going to close it off here. It is 3.30 now and I do have quite a bit of work to do. 
as well. Um, but I super, super enjoyed doing these chores with you today. Again, like I said, this is the stuff that I would normally do on a day when I have to myself. I love just getting a podcast in my ears and just like potter around. If I could just do that for a living, that would just be heaven. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for letting me spend Christmas with you. And I'm about to get a little bit cheesy. So if you don't like cheesy, now is the time to click off. Thank you so much for watching. But I wanna say thank you all of you so much for making this year so amazing. I can't thank you all enough for welcoming me, embracing me in this community and coming back every week and showing me such love and generosity through your comments. And I don't say this lightly, but YouTube really did change my life. And this channel isn't even really big, but it gave me a sense of purpose when I really was super lost and really unhappy. And it really was the pivotal thing in my life that really changed things around. So I can't tell you guys how grateful I am for you. But from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna say thank you for changing my life and Merry Christmas and hopefully next year will be just as fun as this year and hopefully whether you're here all the time, whether you pop in sometimes, I can accompany you sometimes when you're doing plant chores. And with that, I'm going to leave you. I hope you guys have the most beautiful day and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.